I'm going to be 100% honest with you here and say that you don't need this very often, but when you do, it's very handy to have one ready to use. There's not a whole lot to this, and I'm basically making the whole thing from scrap wood and some common hardware that I already have. I'm starting with the rails, and I need two that are 1 8 of an inch thick. I also need quarter inch rails that need a slot in the middle, and rather than cut that slot from a solid piece of wood, I'm going to make those rails up from three pieces. You really need a good strong hardwood to make these with so that it doesn't bend. So the first assembly step is to put those quarter inch rails together. Like I said, they'll be made up of three pieces glued together to form a slot on the inside. And while that's drying, I can start working on the parts that will lock the rails together. And once again, I'm making those from solid hardwood. I need two of these parts and they're going to be exactly the same. So I'm taping them together so that I can cut them both at the same time. And the cut that I'm making here is an eighth of an inch deep recess. And I'm doing that on my table saw with my mini table saw sled in several passes. And I know it looks like my fingers are very close to the blade here, but the blade is not sticking up very high and I'm definitely not going to touch it. These next two pieces are very similar to that first one, except a little bit bigger. Now I need to tip the saw to 20 degrees because I need to cut a bevel into the edge of those thin pieces that I cut to begin with. And I need the bevel there so that I can lock the rails together. It'll act kind of like a dovetail. There'll be another part that presses against it and clamps the rails together so that they can't move. In the meantime, the glue dried on the quarter inch rails and I can do a little bit of sanding there to get rid of the glue squeeze out. And then I can glue on those thin rails and I need to make sure that it's exactly 90 degrees before the glue sets. Now I actually tried to make this part from plywood, but it didn't work. And instead I switched to 1 8 inch thick aluminum. And it's the part that grips the thin rail that has the angle cut in it. And so I need to cut a corresponding angle in this. And probably the easiest way to do that is on my belt sander. Now I need to cut it to the correct length and that's kind of difficult with a hacksaw. So I'm going to cut it a little bit wider than I actually need and grind it down to a perfect fit. And when you press it in, it should lock that rail in place just as it's doing here. I need two of these as well. So I'm cutting and fitting another one. Now I need to drill a hole through both parts that a bolt will fit in and I figure the easiest way to do that is to lock the parts together and hold it really tight while I drill the hole. That hole also needs a countersink but here's a tip aluminum gets hot really fast especially when you're drilling a countersink like this. So I'm using a paper towel as an oven mitt and you want to make sure that it's something that can't catch on the bit. I need to drill a slightly larger hole in that other part, that wider piece that goes on top. And here's where I ran into a problem. The only bolt that I have that will work with this is a number eight. And I don't have any wing nuts for a number eight bolt. And I also don't have a tap for that size bolt. So I'm taking one of those bolts. I cut the head off already and I'm cutting in a groove so that I can turn that into a tap. I'll need that to tap the hole in the wooden wing nuts that I'm making. And I know some of you are probably thinking that there's no way that that's going to last. But surprisingly, threads cut in wood are very durable and will actually last a long time. And here you can see why the quarter inch rail needs a slot in the middle. The other part that clamps onto the thin rail fits in there. 
And the reason why it's done like this is so that the whole thing will sit down flat on a surface. The way that you make this the correct size is to use these blocks that I have here. They'll line up with the edge of whatever recess you want to cut. In this case, I want to cut a recess for the base of my router to fit in, just using that as an example. And because the base on my router is rectangular and not square or round, I've got two different size blocks here. You put those in place and you slide the rails over against them. And I won't lie to you here either, it's going to take some messing around to get these blocks to the exact right size. But once you have them for that size bit, you have them. Like I said, this is just a demonstration. So I've got a piece of half inch plywood that I'm going to clamp the frame down to to try it out. And of course, like everything else, when you're using a router, you have to do it in a few passes to get to the right depth. But when I had the first pass done, I stopped and checked the size to make sure that it's not too tight or too loose. And this looks pretty good. Another feature of this is that you can create a lip without taking the frame out by just swapping the bit for a smaller one. And because I didn't want to ruin my workbench with this cut, I set the depth so that the bit wouldn't go all the way through and just knock out the rest. And I can take the base of the router and put it in the recess and see how it fits. Originally I was going to cut these screws off so they wouldn't be so long, but I decided to put a couple of nuts on top so that'll give me something to grip while I'm tightening these wooden wing knobs. 